The Small Business Show, episode 273 for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. And welcome to uh, an old school format of the small business show <laughs> here. And as you might guess, here in Durham, New Hampshire, as always, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here at my house in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. That's how it goes. I kind of like that start. But it's cool. Get, yeah, that's how it goes. That's where we're, we're here. I mean, we both work from home and both have a, a studio slash office separate separate from our house, which has worked out really well, I think, yeah. for both of us during this uh, situation. Uh, totally. I'm still going oh. crazy, but, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's um, <laughs> and, and our sponsor for this episode is Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast. We'll go into some of the details about that in a minute, but um, but I wanted to get that out in the in the front of the show here, too, yeah. so you folks can check it out. But, it's yeah, important. as I said to our staff, you know, this is probably a month ago now, maybe even five or six weeks, you know, right as the first wave of, you know, stay at home or shelter at home, depending on what state and locale you're in, you know, as the first wave of those sort of things were washing across this country here in the U.S., I, um, you know, we we were in a staff meeting and somebody in the meeting very, you know, just sort of casually said, wow, you know, look at all these people freaked out that they have to work at home. Like, we're, we're all, we're all set. Like, cause we're a distributed company. You know, we we have, we, right. we do video meetings every day. It's our normal thing. We're used to the water cooler. You know, it's like, we're comfortable. It's all fine. Right. We've got our workplaces set up and all of that good stuff. And I said, well, that's true. I said, but hang tight and prepare ourselves. And all, we all need to give ourselves permission for what's going to come in about 10 days. When the realization of what this means to us actually hits home because for me it's not weird for me not to leave my property i leave my house and i come to my office which is separate but it's weird for me not to leave my property it's not weird you know for me to 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 not leave for three or four days like I, you know i sure. go to work yeah. i go home and if i've got a, an appointment or something i'll go or if i have to go to the store or you know whatever i'll leave obviously you know but not now uh but but um it, you know, 10 days in a week, week and a half, it was where for me, it started to hit like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I can't go and do like all the things I want to do. I can't have band practice here, which That's doesn't right. even require me leaving, you know. And and I will I, I will say that, you know, there were there have been a few days of I, I don't I don't I hesitate to use the term depression only because I, I know that I don't suffer from it like some people do. I, it's not a chronic thing for me. And but I don't, it is depressing. But it right. is. Yeah. No, it's it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's probably the right word. I just don't I, I don't want to co-opt somebody else's problems. Correct. Um, you know, yeah. but but it, like I've had a few days where I've found my productivity sucks. And I'm sort of down. Oh, yeah, I've had that problem too. And it's, <laughs> I've had that problem. You know, and it. I think it's normal. I mean, it, you know, again, I don't suffer from, usually suffer from recurring anxiety. But right now, I think, I mean, certainly me and my guess is most of us kind of have this low simmer of anxiety of like, I don't know when, you know, the, the next shoe is going to drop and what that shoe is going to be. And, you, you know, it's like, it's all right there. So. Yeah, yeah, and we all sort of gave ourselves permission for that at at, at the Mac Observer and at Backbeat, and it's like, okay, you know, like, and we've all had our days where it's, you know, like, okay, That's right. I need yeah. to check out for a little bit here, and and then you know regroup and come back, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I think that um, I'm I'm right there with you. Uh, the productivity has been, you know, in the beginning, I was very concerned about the the virus and this kind of thing and loved ones, and you know, uh, I've got my my mom is, you know, getting up there and, uh, you know, want to be sure we're all safe. I got my daughter out of New York city. Sure. So, you know, okay, great. We're getting those things done. And, you know, now, um, I find myself leaning to, well, heavily towards, Hey, you know, we need to get safely back to work. Right. And, uh, I, I, I really stress safely cause I do believe it, you know, I'm not one of those, uh, people that are, you know, hey, this is all a big, you know, whatever, and we shouldn't have done this. No, I think we needed to do it. No, I think, I uh, think so too. One of the reasons, I, yeah. 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 And and so, but now, you know, I'm as we get close to May, uh, and as I talk to more small business owners and my own small businesses that are uh have been dramatically impacted, um, 
due to this. You know, we need to get back to work because I think if we have a global, you know, recession slash depression, it more people are going to be impacted in a dramatically negative way than probably, you know, went through this uh, the whole COVID nineteen thing. Oh, it, it, the, the, the ripple effect here is huge. It's it's been interesting because yeah. our business, you know, the, the whole shelter in place, whatever, stay at home, whatever the orders were like that all hit mid March, right? Mid to late March. And yes, that's right. for us. That's when the ramp up, like usually the last week of March is crazy busy as we're processing oh, orders yeah. and and things to start in Q2 because everybody gets their budgets really late. So that last week of March, first week of April is usually gangbusters for us, just, you know, getting everything going. And I don't need to tell you that it was not gangbusters this year. In fact, <laughs> yeah. it was nothing. No. It was like zero, but it wasn't zero. Yeah. Like there were conversations happening, every, but no one was right. no one was like diving in and spending money and uh, like we would have expected in a normal circumstance. But like people were weren't giving up either. And in fact, I would say last week and now this week we're seeing not, I wouldn't say the same level of activity that I would have presumed at the, you know, at the cusp of April there. But we are definitely seeing a huge uptick from from where we were there, which was, you know, again, zero. Well, that's good. Which is yeah. good. Yeah. And it's it's interesting seeing that what the which companies are, you know, looking to spend money, which ones are looking to sort of capitalize on where we are here. Some companies are unaffected by this. Some companies are affected, but but in a can make it happen in a positive way. And of course, some are are out of the game right now because, it you know, it just doesn't work for them. Um but uh, but it's been it's been interesting. And, you know, as we talk about, there's you you survive and then you thrive. Right. I think we said that on the show about sure. a month ago. Yeah. And and survive works. And then thrive is is what we're figuring out how to do now, which is, you know, yes, taking working with these clients that do have opportunities and making sure that works. But also, you know, you can thrive on customer service. And being super flexible and friendly and understanding and, you know, all of that through this. We've had some clients that needed to move things around and they asked, you know, we know we're we know we're outside or inside the 30 day cancellation window. Can we still move things? It's like, of course, like these are like no one would have predicted that we're here. We're all in this boat together. Let's stay together. Let's not, you know, fight each other. And. It, you know, invoke some clause in a contract that's going to force them to pay me. Like it, it, there's an opportunity uh, to yeah. not be short sighted here. And and I think it's going to pay yes. off. In fact, I think it already is paying off, to be perfectly honest. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think you build build some really uh, strong loyalty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, for those of us that have the resources, I also, as I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago when we talked about this and it there's a tremendous amount of opportunities coming our coming our way. I, I already Big starting time. to see them. I've already had some calls this morning, and I was just talking to a few people. And um, there's a lot of opportunities, but uh, we, you know, you have to again have those resources. And uh, my main concern that I have right now is, you know, who's going to come through the other side? What's it going to look like when you drive through your town with the smaller places, oh, yeah. you know, your barber shop, you know, the nail salon, the, your deli butcher, all those things that, you know, make up your community. How are those people faring right now? You know, and I, I would love to, to hear from you if, if you're hearing my voice, you know, uh, and, and you'd like to tell us what's going on, feedback at businessshow.co. I would love to talk with you about it, hear your, you know, your story, uh, share your information, you know, push it up on LinkedIn and get it out to our network if it, if it would help at all. But uh, I, I, I have some frustration in regards to the businesses that are open and, and I, I'm thankful they're open. I don't want anything to close, but I, I having a hard time distinguishing between one business that is approved to be open and another that that's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I know a lot of it out there, like, you know, I went, I, some of the big box retailers and, and I don't want to single them out because it's great that they're open and I think they should be. Um, but I, I when I, I went this weekend, I had to buy some stuff and I went to like, you know, Lowe's and uh, I, you know, it was packed. 
and yeah, they were doing great. They were mitigating it, which is which is how I think we should reopen. You know, yeah, we've got to we've got to figure it apart. out, right? Yeah, we're no not problem. Gonna, and, and we're not so going to go back to a scenario like it's not going to be a flip no. of a switch, and it's like okay, no. back to normal. No, we've got to. It shouldn't be. We've yeah. got to baby step our way mitigate. into this. Yep, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So, and people had out in California, people are wearing masks, and uh, for the most part, I'd say ninety percent of the people had them on. Uh, they have you know cleaning things right where carts are, and hand sanitizer, and they're letting certain amount of people in but i can't figure out you know we it was crowded so i'm, I'm not sure hmm. the difference between a company like that and a small business that's been told you know you have to close and it's just devastating and and i'm i'm struggling with uh that and so i i figure the most productive thing i can do is just talk and comment and and uh uh, promote the concept of we need to get open safely, but as soon as well, you know, as soon as we possibly can, we need to get these small businesses back open. Yeah. 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 It Well, and, and it's so hard to know. We will either know that we did it too soon or too late. We will. There's no way to know that we did it at exactly the right time. Uh, right. For the because, virus or for the economy? For the economy. Right. I mean, like yeah. there, there's right. well and, and from the virus standpoint, like if we open too soon, we will know like there will be a you know, there will be a, a recurrence and it will surge more, much more quickly than we uh, are ready for. And, and then we've got to go back on lockdown. Right. Like we, that that yeah. will be the indicator that we did it too soon. But if we don't see that, then we either did it exactly at the right point or too late. And there will be no yeah. way to answer that question. <laughs> there and, will be no way. No, I, and, I agree. And so we have to be I, careful not to yeah. try and answer that question because hindsight is valuable totally agree. from a lesson standpoint. Yeah. Like we waited that long and it yeah. worked. Let's not forget that in the future. And then, and Let's then that's celebrate it. that. Yeah. Let's celebrate <laughs> yeah. that. That's and, it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I don't want to criticize like, you know, I don't agree with the vast majority of the politics and politicians in California, but I absolutely commend with the way they have handled this and uh, the governor shut everything down very early. Yeah. You which guys I believe early. is one of the reasons. Yeah. Out of, you know, 40 some odd million people, there's been less than a thousand deaths. Yeah. And I believe we're, we are a net positive, meaning less people have died in this five week lockdown that would have otherwise died. Had we not locked down. Oh, I think that's, and, I think that's a fair, fair thing to say. Yeah. 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 Right. So sure. it, that being said, you know, easing back on some of these things, letting people out, letting people in more into the community, I think is the, is the right thing to do with, you know, keep your distance, wear a mask, you know, wear gloves. If you, if, if that works, uh, whatever it is clean, you know, all this kind of stuff, but so we need people want to see that happening even in just, even just small steps, yeah. hey, we're going to open this back up, these type of things. This is how we're going to do it. Um, I think that will go a long way to easing some of that anxiety that you mentioned, um, especially in the small business community, you know, and I mean, I, I, we can talk, I know we're going to talk about some of these low, you know, uh, safety net programs that are supposed to be helping out, you know, small businesses. Yeah. And, we have some, uh, we have some experience on the other side of that now. Yeah, so we can, yeah, we can talk yeah. about that. And in, in fact, I would like to, yeah. um, we, we also have a, a tech support question from, uh, one of our former guests, uh, or a prior guest. I don't want to say former guest. He's certainly welcome to come back, uh, from David that, uh, about remote access to your business's resources while we're all at home. So we have that to go through as well. Uh, the okay. next thing that I want to do, though, is I want to talk about our first sponsor, which is Text Expander, right? Because we're all talking about productivity these days. In fact, we've been talking about it for half this episode. And this is what Text Expander can help you with. Let us put it this way. If you type something more than three times, you can save time by making it a snippet and letting Text Expander type it for you. That's what you need to that's how you need to think about this. You know, text expander is one of those things that can help you in so many different ways. It's hard to sit here and describe. I always give specific examples because I think I find that that's really a great way, even though you might not use all of them. It lets you see how I use them. But as a general rule, if you're finding yourself typing something a third time, pause, make it a snippet, let text expander type it for you. And then the next time. 
you don't have to do anything other than click a button or type a short little thing and text expander expands it. Hence its name text expander to type it for you. And so you can do these with all kinds of things, addresses, customer service responses. I do it with my email addresses and phone numbers so I can fill out web forms super quick without having to think about it. And What's really cool is you can make snippets on one computer and use it on all of your devices so that you're more productive everywhere. And yes, you can share with your teams, too. So you got to check this out and you get 20 percent off your first year just for being a listener of this show. Go to TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more. Get Text Expander for your Macs, your Windows machines, Chromes iPhone, iPads, again, 20% off your first year at TextExpander.com slash podcast. And our thanks to TextExpander at TextExpander.com slash podcast for sponsoring this episode. So let's talk about these loans here, Shannon, shall we? We, we <laughs> talked in the last episode about applying for uh, whether or not we should apply. So we did yep. eventually. Um, and I say eventually because... When they when they first came out and what let, let's talk first about the Paycheck Protection Program. OK, and there's- well, let, let, let's preface it. Yeah. And let's preface it. Both uh, Dave and I own multiple small businesses right. that are uh, kind of the target, uh, you know, I would think for a lot of these programs. Oh, yeah. I had right? five businesses, yeah. including ours that I that I submitted yeah. for. And but. The, at first, when they opened up the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, the idea of which I'm, I'm a, I don't want to assume anything. The way that that's supposed to work is you apply for a loan of 2.5 times your average monthly payroll. And then as long as you use it for your payroll, the first eight weeks of payroll that you use it for are forgiven and you don't have to pay back that loan that in a nutshell, there's a, there's some asterisks that go through there that give you some flexibility, but yeah, a few that, other expenses you can cover. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the gist of this. And I kept thinking of it as essentially pre unemployment. If the government is going to pay unemployment on people that small businesses have to lay off, let's not lay them off. Let's keep them working. Let's keep things moving forward. And so that's kind of how I, I thought about this in my head. Uh, at first, you had the only types of applications that could be accepted were if you had true employees on your payroll and you filled out, you know, IRS 940 and 941 forms. So we do not have that here at uh, our business that that under which small business show operates. Right. Uh, I do have that with two of my other businesses. So and those two businesses happen to be with Bank of America. That's that's but. Which is fine. And at first you had to have a lending relationship in place as well as a banking relationship that was relaxed uh, eventually. So I really only had one business that I could apply with uh, on day one. And I did that uh, applied with Bank of America. We already have a lending relationship. We already have a banking relationship. I got everything in. They then came back and asked me for the next two days to fill out the same forms again and again because they kept revising how they needed to have them in house. Uh, but they were very nice uh, about sure. it. They called me. In fact, in fact, it was an investment banker that called me from New Jersey, from his basement. And he was like, look, you got to go. You got to bear with me here. I've never done a bank loan in my life. He's like, but they've wow. refocused us. That might be helpful. That yeah. might be helpful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but he was great. He might be the guy. Yeah, yeah he was good. Was cool. And he gave me his cell phone number to call him back if I had any questions. I mean, it was, you know, from a customer service standpoint at that interaction. And in fact, most of them were fine. So we finally got all the paperwork in. And then we were able to apply with the other business with uh, that, that didn't have a lending relationship. So we got that paperwork in. And then cool. we were able to apply for businesses that don't do payroll. They, they opened it up. That so was on the April 10th, right? April 10th. Yeah, they opened right. that up to self-employed or contractor type. Uh, that's right. Type thing. Right? And that's us because yeah. we pay ourselves a distribution. We're an LLC. So we don't we're not on payroll. And so we had to wait until then. And we filled it out. Now, we use currently Citizens Bank here, which is a smaller bank than Bank of America. I got our your loan has been completed, but there isn't any money left for you note for <laughs> Citizens Bank from Citizens yeah. Bank for this business. Three days before I got the note from Bank of America 
for uh, the first business that I applied for that also said the oh. same thing. There's not your, your loan is, you know, your application's complete. You're good to go, but we don't have any money for you. So the smaller banks definitely, at least in our, you know, we realize the plural of anecdote is not data experience is that the smaller bank was able to get things done faster than the bigger bank. That's Which, cool. Yeah. But it didn't help. Yeah. Like we still haven't got any no, money. No. <laughs> well, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're recording this on, on, uh, you know, Tuesday, the 21st, we're going to, you know, we'll push out on the 22nd, but, and I, I'm hoping by the end of today, they, uh, approve, you know, uh, additional funding for that and that you'll be in the queue for the, for the well, PPP. Well, that's it. We should be in the queue gets. for that now. Yeah. That's correct. That's right. That's that, right. That's the whole, the, the yeah. other thing. Yeah. And the other thing, and, and it doesn't surprise me that the smaller community banks would be the one to go. And there's some, no. you know, I've been reading a lot about some of the larger banks kind of cherry picking uh, the loans that they did because, you know, and, and as a, maybe as a, that's why I mentioned that not having a loan person help you might've been better because a loan person is, is uh, compensated by the their book of business and then number and the dollar amount of those loans. Right. And I, as human nature. Do I focus on the, you know, the million dollar loan or the $10,000 loan or the $50,000 loan? Well, I can tell you where, where they're going to focus. So I think some of us uh, smaller businesses got lost in the shuffle. The other resource well, I would point I, out I, is- I want to I, I, okay. I come back, go ahead and point out your other resource, but I do want to come back yeah. to that because I'm not convinced Good. the bigger banks did that <laughs> cherry picking. It's the, anecdotal. The I, numbers, no, no. I, and, and it's only- it's yeah. yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think it's I think it's anecdotal. And, and I've just been, you know, there's a comment. Well, on some it, of the, okay, we're here. So I've we already derailed. Yeah, so well, I'll, talk about uh, it. yeah I'll explain yeah. it. I, I think, you know, somebody looked at all the data and said, hey, you know, all the the big loans. Well, they didn't say all the big loans. They said the majority of the hundred fifty thousand dollar and and smaller loans happened at the end of the process, not at the beginning. Therefore, the banks cherry picked the big ones. And I would say that may be true, but co correlation is not causation. Maybe, yeah, because yeah, that's what, right. We know that we had to wait a week for the sole proprietors and self-employed. True, it, right? And those to, are smaller, and those yep, are going to be the smaller ones. So I. I yeah. Yeah. Until I have more evidence, like that's not enough to to convict, in my opinion. Yeah, no, no, no. I yeah. I agree. I totally agree. And it's just just a talking point. Yeah, uh, it is. You know, yeah, me, yeah. I'm always I'm always ranting yeah. against you know huge companies and banks and that kind of thing. So that's I my, try that's to my, only uh, be positive framework. on social media. So <laughs> this is my this is my thing. It's like if yeah. I don't have something nice to say, I usually <laughs> don't right. say it. So I you know, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you like, me. Yeah, I mean, you like yeah. to point out point out things like that. So, oh, absolutely. but the, but the other resource that I would, I would, you know, highly recommend you look at is, um, you know, direct or alternative, uh, banking lenders type thing like PayPal or cabbage. And, uh, I got, you know, uh, I do a lot of business with PayPal. I've done millions and millions of dollars worth of uh, business with them over the years. So they reached out to me, uh, and once that, contractor thing opened up at April 10th and they were like, Hey, you know, uh, we want to get you into the queue, this kind of thing. So they, they were great. And like a technology company, which is what I would consider PayPal, really not yeah. a bank. The process was awesome. You know, everything online, you know, uh, quick back and forth, this document upload here, do this, do that check boxes. You're missing this. You need that. It was, it was phenomenal. Um, and I got the same thing. Hey, the the program is is out of money, but get your stuff in so you can be in the queue in case it gets you know funded again. Yeah, and then I also spoke to some of my other uh, business peers that had some very good success through Cabbage. You now they're they're a lender. I don't do business with them. I think their their lending rates are uh, how, how should we say um, high. very high. There you go. And, yeah, high uh, usury, or I'm sorry, a loan shark <laughs> business. But <laughs> if you need them, but maybe sure. you've had, you know, again, let me know. Maybe, maybe I, you've had great experience with I've Cabbage. I've heard of people uh, that have but, had really good experience through Cabbage. That's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, right. Yeah. And, and even PayPal, you know, their, their, their loans that they make are, you know, if you think about it, they're a bit expensive, but it, it's a great way to do it if you need the cash. And uh, so I, anyway, I would don't forget those uh, if you're doing the, for the paycheck protection program and uh, mm. let us know how it went for you. We would love to, 
you know, I, I don't want to rely just on anecdotal evidence and I'm, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of government, but I am a fan of how quickly they moved to tr- and how they did things differently uh, this time to try to do things, you know, like your to your your comment pre unemployment. I think yeah. it's a great way to fund this and even funding the unemployment throughout the country where, you know, sole proprietors, uh, contractors, gig workers can apply and get an unemployment, you know, payment. I think the systems are all overwhelmed and I don't know anybody that's gotten money out of that, uh, yet, but, uh, you know, I, I know my daughter had to go through the New York thing, which took her almost 10 days to get, uh, to get it filed. Hmm. And so, you know, uh, I'd love to hear some feedback again, feedback at business share your story. Let us know, you know, how it worked for you. But I also want to mention what about that E I D L you remember that the economic injury disaster loan? Yeah, of course. And that was one of the first things that was released. And there was this magic $10,000, which then changed to up to $10,000 mm-hmm. grant that you were going to get. And even when I applied, it said, you'll get that money within three days. Three business right? days. That's uh, right. I've, n- I've not seen that money and I know you haven't either. That's right. Yeah. Not only have I not seen the money, I haven't, I mean, uh, I, we got I one that email. email. We got no, we was got that one, an email from them? Or was that, yeah. oh, that was from the SBA. It was from the SBA. That did say, that did come out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was about two weeks after it I was. applied where that email came in to yeah. say, you know, you're, we've got your stuff or this kind of thing. And, and I, again, I don't want to be pretend I'm a hindsight genius. And I, the SBA people are just awesome. And but this the SBA isn't what they has do. never, right. correct. They've <laughs> never loaned money, you know, they're a guarantor and having gotten an SBA loan before and all that kind of stuff, it typically goes through a bank and the yeah, SBA just backs great. it up. So, yeah. Yeah. So again, I would love if you had a different experience with the EIDL, uh, tell us so we can share it with everybody and, and give them some insight, feedback at businessshow.co um, or come or go to businessshow.co slash Facebook and you can share it up in the uh, the support group go. that we have yeah. up on Facebook. I did so. have one friend uh, who runs a very small business, two employees in, uh, I think in Georgia, and he got the Paycheck Protection Program loan and he worked with his very small bank. He said they worked around the clock on the weekend and they got him in. So, uh, so there, oh, that's so, great. Yeah, it's nice to actually talk to someone that I know. That is like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah, I have right. the money, not I'm tell I'm Correct. told I'm getting the money, you know, but I already have it. Yeah. We're, we're spending it the way we're supposed to. It's like, OK, good. We just need way more funding for the program. So that's good. You yeah, know. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, this they literally passed this thing three weeks ago, right? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, getting the money out is is. Uh, the hard part getting it passed in a week was you know a miracle but then uh you know getting it out there is is very tough and it's tough you know keeping it keeping it funded yeah. so i, I have yeah. to i have to give props to the people that are trying uh, i have a, a totally different set of beliefs about the people that are holding things up to get things refunded but since we don't talk this is not a political show well if, uh, we, I'm not if it were we that, would be but, we would be bashing both sides of the aisle is what we would be doing. of course of course <laughs> they all do it they yep, all do it it's and, all the same and yep. uh it, it is yes yeah, yes yeah, so all right but, so i uh, wanted to but yeah I'm, so it's great yeah i wanted to get this tech support thing in before we because i promised we would um Sounds good. I, yeah. David, uh, David Dawson, who uh, is from the instant print shop, uh, is working from home, as are all of his employees. And he said with the uh, most recent interview we did with Brian Gill, we were talking about firewalls. He says it got me to thinking. And I wondered uh, if you might be able to help. He says we have a Synology disk station that we store all our client files on. And with my staff working at home, I set up remote access on it by adding a direct access, poked a hole in the firewall or poked a hole in the router and have it so that people on the outside world can access the disk station. Is there a better way to do this? Uh, And the answer is absolutely. Because right now, the way he has set it up means anybody in the world can attempt to log into that thing. 
And oh, that's yeah, sure. not, not the best idea. Now, Synology stuff is great. We use it here. It, it is th- like if you're going to run a server for your business uh, local in your office, that's where I would start because they really have got it going really, really well. However, uh, the security is only as good as you make it. And when you poke that hole and p- forward ports from the outside world in, which is the easiest thing to do, it makes it easy, not just for you, but for everyone. I always say, you know, security is uh is not a binary thing you you can have ultimate security or ultimate convenience but most of us choose a spot along that continuum between the two to live on right and so what he has chosen is far closer to ultimate convenience than ultimate security but there is a better way and the better way is a vpn because that same synology disk station can allow you to have an inbound VPN. Now, back when like Express VPN was a sponsor here, that's an outbound VPN. That's protecting your traffic on the way out. Uh, the same concept applies though, whereas on that you set a tunnel that gets from your wherever you are, coffee shop or whatever, out to uh Express VPN servers without anybody being able to see. You're tunneling to their servers. Well, you can tunnel into your office by setting up your own VPN server on the disk station. And I can put a link in the show notes about how to set this up. It's fairly straightforward. And the cool part is now you don't have to poke a hole in your router to port to, you know, open up file sharing uh, for the world. You just poke a hole in your router to get to the VPN server, which is a very secure thing. And once oh. someone has tunneled into the VPN server and authenticated properly, At that point, it's like they're on the local network. So any resources, including, you know, if there's a printer there or if there's four computers that are sharing files, including the disk station, you can see them all because it's like you're there. The VPN lets you, you know, tunnel into the office digitally, safely, social distancing, but still getting access to all the computing resources there. So setting up that VPN, it's really straightforward, especially if you've got a Synology disk station, but your router might have this too. So I, I highly recommend looking into that as your option. It'll take you a little bit longer to set up than just poking a hole in the firewall and walking away. But, uh, you know, give yourself 30 minutes to an hour. You can get this set up and then everything is way safer. So that's my, uh, that's my, that's my advice. That's my answer. Hope that helps David. We did talk way more in depth about this on my Mac geek Gab podcast this week. So oh, that's if, you good. Wanna, if you want to learn more, you can certainly go and, uh, and, and listen to us talk through that. How do they, how do they find that? Mac geek, Mac geek And I'll put a link in Perfect. our show notes here too. So yeah, cool. That sounds good. All that's right. Good. Well, that's, um, that's where we leave it for today. I think folks it's, uh, Good show. It's time to good, go. good information. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of info. We really would love to, uh, uh, you know, hear from you and, and hear your information. Know what, how, how have these uh, programs helped you or if you've had the same frustrations that we have, but, um, you know, how, how things going out there? Share your story. Feedback at businessshow.co. Please do. And hear from you. check yeah. out businessshow.co slash guides, because that's where you're going to be able to get your copy of our book about our favorite mistakes that we've all learned from. So definitely want to check that out. The reviews have been coming in. People are loving this book. Yep. In fact, it's 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 being received. Even better than I thought it would, Shannon. I'm really kind of stoked. About yeah, it's this, doing so. it's doing great. We just got the fi- the uh, paperback version. Uh, I just got the author copies last week. They look great, and uh, you can you know pick one up. We're going to be featuring some stuff up on the uh, you know Facebook and on our LinkedIn networks up there. Uh, we appreciate your support. It's one great way to support the small business show, um, and we really appreciate it. another great way is to leave us a five star review up on the podcast directory that you are listening to. You would not believe how much, how important and how much it helps and how it raises our rankings when those reviews come in. So those of you that have left reviews, and we've had a lot of great ones recently, we really appreciate it. If you haven't, during your shutdown while you're at home, do a little, take, uh, you know, 20, 30 seconds and leave us a five-star review. Businessshow.co slash reviews. Thanks for listening, folks. We will uh, we'll see you. you next week. Yeah. Living that charmed life, would you? 